Get ready, San Antonio. Here comes the Longhorns. A herd of cattle and cowboys are hitting the streets of downtown, bringing the Old West back to Texas. Plus, it's a face-off between cowboys. The Vaquero Cook-Off has a new home right in the heart of San Antonio. And we're showing you the food, fun, and of course, the competition. Western Heritage Weekend is back. And it starts right now. Let's, Let's rodeo, rodeo San, Antonio. San Antonio. Let's, Let's rodeo, rodeo San Antonio. Let's rodeo San Antonio. Live from downtown San Antonio, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. SA Live coverage powered by the new 2022 Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. And this is where the Old West makes its return to the Alamo City, and it is cold, but a beautiful day here in downtown San Antonio. Uh, welcome to the 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, folks. And our SA Live coverage is brought to you by the 2022 Silverado, the newest, strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. And of course, this is the official kickoff to the 2022 San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Well, right now, a huge herd of cattle are being released onto Houston Street and will make their way right through the heart of San Antonio. Yes, of course. And these gentle giants carry with them the rich heritage and tradition of the Lone Star State that we are honoring here today. We're live at the corner of, of Houston and Jefferson Street, waiting for the Longhorns to arrive and the parade to get started. Yep, and hopefully the excitement with all these folks here lying in the streets. Boy, the sun is out, and it is chilly out here, but everybody is so excited to be back down here, and I know that is keeping folks warm because we've been warming up with all these people around here. And, of course, the parade is bigger and better than ever, and it's all about tradition today, but, of course, there has to be some change, and one of those changes is the parade route. Now, due to construction, participants will turn north on Santa Rosa, east on Travis Street, then use Main Avenue to get back back on Houston Street. The entire route should take about an hour to complete. Yes, and this is not only for the, the parade and cattle drive, but it is a day full of events. And out there at Mountain Park at Jen Tobias Strusky, where they had a free breakfast. Good morning, Jen. <laughs> yes, what kind of tasty food have you tried so far? Yes, okay, so I had a biscuit and that helped warm me up, but there's so much good food and this is something they do every year. Now the location may change, but the heart and passion that goes into it, they're hard at work here. Now it is wrapping up. Now I'm gonna come over here and talk to Bill, a retired history teacher. Bill, how long have you been doing this coming out here? We've been doing this since 2013 and it's our pleasure because it's the beginning of the rodeo season, which is something we all look forward to every year in San Antonio. Yeah. It's just a great way to start off the rodeo season and we're just really proud to be down here serving people, showing us, showing them an essential part of our history. Yes, indeed. Now we were talking about the history behind it. Right here you can see Pan de Campo and some beans. Let's talk about the history of this dish. Well, the Pan de Campo is a dish from the King Ranch. What happened is they'd have a wagon out in the pastures to be working cattle and they didn't have Mamacita there to make tortillas for them. So they made a camp bread called Pan de Campo, which is basically a camp bread, a fry bread made with lard, wonderful lard and sugar and buttermilk. But it is something that they could do in a hurry to go along with their meal, which is primarily frijoles. Yes, okay, and that's what we have here too, is the beans, the biscuits and gravy, and then the coffee. Yes, yes. right, those are the staples that they would have on the, on the trail or on the working camps, simply because, you know, they had to have something that was stable that they could carry without refrigeration. And so it's something that is much Bet, much better in terms of what we're using today, but it was much simpler back then. Yes, and also it kept them full, right? <laughs> well, you know, a lot of the trail drives, when they would begin, the cowboys who had signed up wouldn't sign up with a certain one unless they knew who the cook was going to be. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing to inquire about. Yeah, if yes. you're going to be on the trail for three months, you might want to know if the guy can cook or not. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Now, you were telling me there's lots of history with the cattle drive in San Antonio. Oh, in San Antonio, of course. San Antonio, you know, for 300 years, years has been a settlement where cattle have come through here and cattle, all the cattle drives came from South Texas, not necessarily through San Antonio, but to here and further west as the trails closed. But San Antonio was like the place where barbed wire was demonstrated with longhorns right here in Military Plaza. Wow. So we have a long history of the cattle business in San Antonio. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I could talk to him all day. All the history you have, uh, the Fonda Coppola, I'm definitely going to try. Check out the gravy over here. 
here and they are still going giving away again this is free how awesome is that so uh that looks awesome you guys are doing great bill thank you so thank much you. oh yeah i'll shake your hand and i'm gonna grab this fiona mike back to you i'm gonna sample <laughs> this Ooh, yes <laughs> oh, that looks good. That looks so good. Right? I'm hungry. Yeah. Oh, and of course, one of the most exciting parts of the day are the Longhorns. And leading the way with probably a breakfast burrito in his hand is David Elder from Texas Eats. Yeah, he's just a few yards in front of those Longhorns. Hey, David, if you drop it, leave it because they're right on your tail. <laughs> You know, I actually left it inside of the truck today, luckily, but right behind me, we do have the Longhorn. We also have a lot of excited people here on the parade route. How y'all doing? Let's rodeo San Antonio, let's do it. This is how you kick off the 2022 San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. We're out here on the parade route, a couple detours this year, but don't worry, we have a truck in case anything goes a little crazy. I'm diving in there. We've had it before where the Longhorn get a little frisky, but don't worry about it. Right behind us, we have some ranchers that have control of what's going on. These are majestic creatures, iconic pieces of Texas history. And we'll be getting into this as well here as we continue with the parade. But I want y'all having some fun? Yeah. Look at this. They even got the little longhorn hats going on. We got a little roper. I like the roper right there too. Man, y'all, this is what it's all about. I'm so glad y'all came out. It's not too cold, right? No. Oh, no. There we go. And we got some music, Les Rodeo. You guys, I'm so pumped. It's been two years. How y'all doing? I, I don't, I got some food in the truck for y'all later, okay? Okay, they're all excited about it too. And if you were watching Texas Eats before this, thank you so much for tuning in. And you guys, we are super pumped to bring you here the parade that we haven't been able to bring to you since 2020. This is what San Antonio is all about. This is the culture of Texas right here. And you guys, this is the ranchers. These guys here are from Kimball Cattle and they're gonna be bringing them all in. Dr. Kimball himself is actually gonna be bringing them in as well. But we have a lot of Longhorn and we're gonna be looking more at them here as we progress throughout the parade. This is what it's all about. We have a lot of lovely people over here as well. A lot more people than I anticipated. This is great. This is fantastic. And like I said, we are walking the route. So don't worry, the truck's going a little fast now. Look at this, here we're gonna to have to start jogging. Don't worry. <laughs> We're gonna start jogging. I'm gonna to toss it back to Mike and Fiona though. You guys, don't worry, I'm running up to you guys though. <laughs> you're, 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 in, you're in good shape, David, because you're gonna wear out. Pace the yourself. <laughs> Deep breaths. Yes, exactly. So yeah, those Longhorns are gonna be coming down Houston Street in just a couple of minutes. But before we do that, we have some very important business to take care of, and that is giving away some freebies. <laughs> Few trivia questions for the crowd here. So who do we have up first? What's your name? Solomon Needham. All right, here we go. Your question is, mutton busting is where kids try to hold on to a wild running sheep. How many seconds do they need to hold on to buckle? Six seconds. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Next, what's All your right. name? Nicole Jones. Nicole. Okay, here we go. What is the minimum amount of time a bull needs to hold on to the bull for a successful ride? Eight seconds. All right! Two for two, folks. There we go. Yes, indeed. Tickets to the rodeo grounds. Next, Congratulations. Name? My name is Estrella. All right, here we go. What kind of cookie do pigs get as a reward for the pig races? My guess is Oreos. Yeah. That is correct. <laughs> Favorite cookie of mine, I too. I wonder if they divide them up and eat them for filling in the middle. What's your name? Linda Needham. All right, Linda. True or false, Brad Paisley is performing this year at the rodeo. So true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes, indeed. Congratulations. Next, what's your name? Alden. All right, here we go. Your question. Do men or women typically compete in breakaway roping? Uh, women. True. Yes. Breakaway Yay. roping is cap roping from Warpath, and typically women compete. All right. Next, we have an A&M fan. What's your name? Cindy. All right, Cindy. Do kids or adults typically compete in the scramble? Kids. Typically kids between ages 12 and 17. Congratulations. We so. have got some great rodeo <laughs> fans here. Give yourselves a big round of applause, everybody. That was so much fun. And you know what? The parade hasn't even started yet. Yep. The Western Heritage Weekend is just getting started. We're going to take a quick break, but we are going to be coming back here with the 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. Don't see any cattle in Longhorns yet, but they're coming. <laughs> Heritage Parade.
Parade and Cattle Drive features dozens of decorated wagons dating back as far as the 1800s. It celebrates the time in history before the railroads came to Texas. Historic cattle drives would often start in San Antonio and the surrounding area and lead north across the United States. The first modern cattle drive consisted of 35 Longhorn. Today, there's more than 100, followed by sheep, horses, carriages, buggies, cowboys, dancers, bands, all continuing the story of who we are as Texans. is brought to you by the new 2022 Silverado. It is so great seeing the crowds lining Houston Street right here. Everybody is so excited. The sun is out, and I'm not seeing any uh, Longhorns yet, but it's just right down the street, right down there, coming any minute now. And, of course, all this is leading up to this start of the rodeo on February 10th. Yes, indeed, and I had a chance to uh, chat with Cody Davenport, who is the CEO of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, <laughs> to talk about what to expect, what's new, and why you should get out there and enjoy it. Well, it is so great to say let's rodeo San Antonio and uh, here with us today is the CEO of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Co Cody Davenport. It is an exciting time of year. I mean, the excitement, you can just feel it around here, right? Oh, absolutely. We're so excited, especially after last year. I mean, seeing San Antonio wake up like it has and recognize it's rodeo season, it's good to be back in force. Okay, what's new this year? Uh, new this year, we've got mutton busting, but we're also working very hard to take a lot of our agricultural components, exhibits and things of that nature, and bring them out into our festival area. So we start really integrating the public that's here, getting the agricultural experience, realizing they're out of stock show and rodeo, but yet maintaining that fair feel as well. So I think they'll see a lot of neat changes on our grounds this year and our layout and that whole flow. The carnival is back up here on our northeast side. We've actually expanded it. It has a larger footprint this year. Um, we'll have some vibrant things in there, like we have its own DJ in there this year. We'll be uh, pumping its own music, it's kind of its own feel. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people are really gonna see, uh, people that grew up going to the rodeo and people that haven't been here, you're gonna see a vibrant grounds, really integrating agriculture. And you're gonna see a layout like you have never seen here before. I mean, one good thing, again, coming out of COVID, we shook everything up. Come down and see the rodeo this year. It's going to be bigger and better than ever, and the grounds are going to be beyond anything they've ever seen as far as the way they flow and what else happened down here. And, okay, come down and see it. What are the dates? February 10th through the 27th. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All yeah, right. So much is going on. And the other thing that they have said, they've had mm -hmm. about a two-year commercial for the rodeo, thanks to the show Yellowstone. So a lot of people <laughs> are excited are, about it. You are so. very much channeling right now. Okay. <laughs> you now, too. <laughs> now, another exciting part of this Heritage Weekend is the Vaquero Cook-Off. But this year, it has a brand new home, and it's a place that we're familiar with, right? Yes, indeed. Jen Tobias Trusky is down there. I got to ask, what's cooking, Jen? Yes, we love our Market Square, right? Such a historic place, and this is home now to the Vaquero Cook-Off, and we have one of our former winners here, Rob Sizzle, right? Yeah, how you doing? <laughs> doing great. So tell me about what you're cooking today. Uh, well, today I'm going to do, uh, for Cook's Choice, I'm going to do chicken soft tacos. I'm using my mom's recipe. Wow. Can you tell us anything about that recipe? <laughs> well, you know, it's a secret. <laughs> but no, it's made with a lot of love, so yes. that's what I got from her. Uh, I'm doing uh, chili con carne as well, and uh, I already kind of blended up my chiles, my chiles Ooh, right here. Let me so see. have a smell of that. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's good, right? That's gonna be good chili. I so, love chili. Oh, oh yeah, the chili con carne. Yes. So hopefully, you know, this year with the team, all the good luck we had from last, the last time, 2020. Um, hopefully we can place. And what do you got cooking back there? I got some bacon and onion sizzling. Yes, sizzle. Yeah. Hence the Rob sizzle. Yes. Copyright. Uh, for the charro beans. Okay, and the beans, if they're working on those there. So this takes some time, right? Oh, yeah. To get it right? Yes, not only that, it's a few days in preparation. Uh, yeah. You know, so we were running around like crazy to get last minute ingredients yesterday just so we can be as fresh as possible. Yes, I'm sure that cold weather and everything closing didn't help. <laughs> no, I was a little scared to be here, yeah, but yeah, you know, they have it here. they have it all set up nice for us, salted, and it's, it's warmed up, so nice. it's gonna be a great turnout. And a little bit of a friendly competition, right? Because your, your team next door, you Team know, Tombstone. These guys over here, you know, we do a wild hog cook-off together, but they're, they're somebody to be, a, a force to be reckoned with, if I may. All right, well, I'm gonna go check their stuff out. Thanks, yeah, Rob. Yeah, thank you. 
and welcome <laughs> team tombstone y'all mentioned yellowstone what a great show i love y'all's team name hi this is arena and what do you got cooking reina um we've got some chili that we are starting off right now whoa uh, of course we've got it simmering right now so that we can go ahead and do all our extra dumps in there and i've got some menudo also going now how long yes. is that process the menudo process it uh well it depends on how much you're cooking but I started it because it's a, a big pot, so I started it early for it to be ready by six. By six hours? Yes. And you're hoping to be? <laughs> I'm hoping to be. They're a force to be reckoned with. They, yeah. they are the first champions that Valkero uh, Cook-Off had. Yep. So we're hoping and yep. praying that we get everything done. And we're also for um, Chef's Choice, we're doing street tacos. Street tacos. All yes. right. It's nice that you had that option, right? To yes. Throw in another uh, whatever we wanted. Whatever Perfect. option we wanted. Thank you, Reina. Thank good you. Luck. Good Thank luck. you so much. Thank All you. All right. All right, guys. So much good food. I'm getting really hungry. Back to you guys. <laughs> oh, hey, Jen, is there anything else or new that you're looking forward to trying? You know what? I always love trying the menu, though. So I think I'll try that. But they're mentioning the street tacos because you have that cook's choice. So I'll try a taco, too. I really will try anything here. <laughs> Sign me up for anything. Yeah, any samples are willing to give me, guys. <laughs> I can almost smell it from here. So, <laughs> all right, we are done. Thank you very much, Jen. Don't forget, make sure you have doggy bags for us and leftovers. So, all right, we are waiting and I'm maybe able to see the start of the parade way down there. But of course, we are waiting on those longhorns. Uh, David Elder has a close up view. What's up, David? Yes. How's it going? Yeah. You I'm guys, going. we are having a lot of fun out guys, here. We are, we are actually right in front of the longhorn. We got a lot of people out here having fun. How y'all doing? And as you can see behind us, we are just making that next turn on to Houston. We are on Houston Street. Y'all excited to see some Longhorn today? Yeah. Oh, come on, that was like a five out of 10. I said, y'all excited today, come on. There we go. There's some San Antonio love right there. You guys, right behind us, we have the ranchers and we have all the Longhorn. We have made our way down this far now. We have made the four turns that the cattle were gonna make on the parade route. And now we're on Houston. We're coming up right to where Mike and Fiona are as well. And you guys, we're having a blast. A lot of people having fun. You guys, this is so cool, right? Let's rodeo San Antonio, come on. And we'll toss it back to Mike and Fiona. <laughs> oh, I love seeing those long hairs. We're gonna see them here in a minute. We can see the start of the parade way down there, a couple of blocks down. It's gonna be here in just a second. All right, the 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive is underway. We'll be back in a few. Back to the 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. We are down here right along Houston Street. The sun is out and here comes the parade. Oh, yes. And holding the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive banner this year's Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive Committee, of course, and volunteers from East Central FFA and 4-H. Yep, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive Committee was established in 2012 and is currently under the direction of Committee Chairman Alex Pena, our dear friend, Director and Committee Vice Chair Jennifer Daya, and Director of Events and Marketing Communications Coordinator Veronica Flores, Director of Logistics Coordinator Chris Clutter, and includes nearly 300 committee members and volunteers, and boy, do they do a lot of hard work. Oh, yeah, and it has become one of the most successful events held in downtown San Antonio and has been awarded the best family event by San Antonio's downtown's best awards ceremony. You know, and just look at all the folks that are lining the street down here. Yes, it is. So here we have now coming up here and kind of the star of the show, the Kimball Cattle, Texas Longhorn Cattle owned by Kimball Cattle Company, Dr. Joyce, Dr. Janice and Dr. Scott Kimball. Kimball Cattle has been in operation since 1982 with a herd of more than 200 Texas Longhorn cattle. They've won hundreds of awards for their Longhorns. And also, right before the uh, cattle were coming up here, of course, we did have the uh, 
There we can see the cattle coming up. We had the uh, Fallen Western Heritage Parade committee member banner. But now, as you can see, there they come. We got about, oh, and leading the way, of course, David Elder right there. He's not running anymore. <laughs> no, so no. we've got about 50 to 75 head of Longhorn. And the Kimballs are proud to have, of course, bred and raised the eight-time world and international grand champion Texas Longhorn Trophy steer named WOW. Yeah. And in honor of WOW, the Kimballs built WOW's Longhorn Museum in downtown Carn City. Mr. Scott Kimball and Mr. Sean O'Brien are walking with the Longhorns today. And Kimball cattle are friends of SA Live and made a visit to the show. Um. And a couple of years ago, brought some of those cattle with us. We learned so much about them. Uh, their horns can grow, and you've heard maybe a half an inch to uh, a few inches per year. And I think Dr. Dr. Kimball said at one point, one of the longest sets of horns he had was what, 11 feet? 11 feet ish, yeah. I want to say. But what's interesting is he said that as long as their hips and shoulders can get through an opening, they can get those horns right through there. They can even knock a fly off their back if they want to with those horns. Yes, and it's always amazing to me how they're going to load them all up and get them down here. We asked him how he does that. He said very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> they don't like the dark, so they have to light the trailers, get them all down. But you know, it's just amazing to think that this same scene was carried out hundreds of years ago. And there they are. And definitely the stars of the shows because the crowd are loving those long. Oh, lots of cameras out right now to get this coming down the street. <laughs> and, and here he is, right here behind us, is Dr. Kimball. Yes, so, hi. Thank you, present. Can I take copy of today? Oh, Too thank small. you, Dr. Kimball. Thank you very <laughs> thank much for you. bringing those those Longhorns again, oh. sir. Appreciate it. And there they go, down on Houston Street. What do we got there? All right, and now next coming up we have Texas Herding Association. The Texas Herding Association is a nonprofit club formed in 2011 to promote herding in Texas. It includes all types of herding venues, such as the American Kennel Club, American Herding Breeds Association, the Shepherd Club of America, and Border Collie Trials. Yep, and the Texas Herding Association is open to all herding breeds. The livestock they herd include sheep, ducks, and cattle. I didn't realize they, they herd ducks. ducks. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's quack, quacking me up. All right, the handlers participating in today's parade are professional handlers, trainers, and approved trial judges. Now, in addition to competing at the top level, they also raise their own stock for commercial sale. The sheep in the parade are a hair breed sheep known as a dwarfer. And they're bred for their meat, heat resistance, and shed their hair in the spring. The Border Collies you see today will be competing in the San Antonio Stock Show Sheepdog Trial on Tuesday, February 22nd at 1 p.m. at the Freeman Coliseum. It is always amazing watching those dogs work and how they, they, they work in a group together. One will, you know, sit over here and the next one's going to be, you know, taking them this direction. I mean, look at them go. Those dogs are earning their kibbles and bits. I hope my dogs at home are watching. <laughs> They could learn a thing or two. <laughs> Just another one of the, the great things that makes the stock show and rodeo and, of course, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive so special. Again, the Texas Herding Association. And coming in behind them is the Marine Corps Mounted Color Guard. Couple get a, got to get a couple more shots of the sheep there and the herding dogs. It is so fun, and you can see off in the distance there, Look the crowd, this. and there are about three, four folks deep all along Houston Street right here, just enjoying it. And of course, we've got the scoopers, boy, some of the most important folks in this whole parade and cattle drive. From South Sand High School. <laughs> And there we have the Marine Corps, Corps Mounted Color Guard. The United States Marine Corps has represented the Marine Corps in events across the United States for the last 54 years. This is the last remaining Mounted Color Guard within the Marine Corps today. 
They are riding wild Palomino Mustangs adopted from the Bureau of Land Management's Adopt-A-Horse program, and every Mustang has been carefully selected for their Palomino color and disposition. The horses and Marines train together weekly to maintain their performance readiness. The Mounted Color Guard strives to maintain its traditions and standards of excellence fitting their storied past, and it is a privilege for every Marine who has been given the opportunity to be a part of its legacy. And of course, to all of them, thank you very much for your service. And here we have the sale banner mission statement and scholarship clowns. San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is also known. San Antonio Livestock Exposition or SALE is the acronym. The success of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is attributed to over 6,000 volunteers who give countless hours to the organization. And look at that banner right there. 232 million given to Texas youth. All the money that they have raised throughout the years, fantastic. And they're the driving force to support the Stock Show and Rodeo, a volunteer organization that emphasizes agriculture and education to develop the youth of Texas. With community donor and volunteer support, the organization has donated more than 232 million there to the youth of Texas through scholarships, grants, endowments, and junior livestock auctions. All right. All right. All right, we will head to commercial break right now, and we'll be back with more from the 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, brought to you by the 2022 Silverado. Welcome back to the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. Yes, and right now it continues. You're looking at the San Antonio Pipes and Drums, formed in 1986 by founder Harold, Harold Sutherland, who started playing more than 50 years ago. They present traditional bagpipe band music for the enjoyment of both musicians and audiences. Now notice the kilts in a variety of Scottish and Irish tartans. Tartan is the pattern you see of crisscrossed horizontal and vertical bands in multiple colors. Tartans, you know, they're often mistaken for plaid. I learned something new today. Band members range from teenagers to great-grandparents and play in parades, special events, festivals, and, of course, celebrations. So we're going to listen in right now. Always love the pipes and drums. Next, we have the U.S. Army Junior ROCT. It's one of the largest character development citizen programs in the world from South San Antonio High School. The South San Antonio High School Junior ROTC Department has a mission to motivate young people to be better citizens. Young men and women are under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer Tabitha Y. Williams, Junior ROTC Senior Army Instructor and Master Sergeant Gary Hollins. All right, now one of the most popular and patriotic parts of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is the grand entry performance of the Jack Sellers Palomino Patrol and Drill Team. Absolutely gorgeous, the trappings on these horses. Extensive history behind the Palomino Patrol, much of it surrounding the stunning saddles and again flashy uniforms, which the team originated in 1951. The team is made up of Palomino horses and they're golden in color and sparkle in the sun with their white mane and tail. They're considered one of the most striking horses in the world. Mr. Jack Sellers founded the Jack Sellers Bear County Palomino Patrol once again in 1951. All right, that is Miss Rodeo Texas. Okay, uh, uh, 2021 is Bobby Lorian. Yep, she is from Scotland, Texas. She is 23 years old and holds a bachelor's degree in business marketing from Midwestern. Next, we have Rosa de Casillas, who was founded under the direction of Rose and Cena here in San Antonio. Now, these young ladies are a side saddle equestrian riding group who participate in exhibitions and parades in surrounding counties and help with community service locally. They are fantastic. They are ambassadors who meet and greet dignitaries during their visit to the city of San Antonio. <laughs> <How are you? laughs> here we have Sheriff Javier Salazar right behind us. It just came up here. Uh, of course, and that is the Bear County Sheriff's Office Mounted Patrol Unit. Of course, reestablished by Bear County Sheriff, Sheriff Javier Salazar in 2018, who just stopped by to say hello. 
the, oh. ult- the ultimate of crashing a picture, you know, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> photo bombing. So. <laughs> Next, the sale. San Antonio Livestock Exchange, the International Committee, strengthens the relationships with leaders of Mexico and other visiting countries and with agricultural interests. Then the committee strives to provide an excellent experience for our international guests by offering service, hospitality, and education. Yep, the relationships built by the committee benefit and promote the stock show and rodeo and the agricultural industry as a whole. And some of those beautiful antique wagons and carriages all right of course based here we will be right back after this commercial break with more from the western heritage parade and cattle drive the 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. It has been underway and from here in San Antonio under the direction of Sofia Salgado, Viva Tejana Dance Company strives to continue the infused traditions of Tejano social dance to educate, inspire, and entertain audiences. Yep, the Tejanos love to spread happiness and joy through dancing and they are proud to showcase the continuing Tejano heritage. And they visited SA Live earlier this week and gave our audience a special performance. They were so much fun on the show. Oh, they're beautiful. I love those outfits. All the great pink that they are wearing. Look at that belt buckles, too. There they go. Uh, <laughs> it's so beautiful looking at everybody back behind us here, lining Houston Street on this gorgeous, gorgeous Saturday morning in San Antonio. Here we have the South San Antonio FFA. It was founded in 2014. The 2021 through 2022 officers include President Shauna Parker, Vice President Natalie Reyes, Secretary Mia Tovar, Treasurer Amanda Jimenez, and Historian Ashley Gutierrez. Yep, and South San Antonio FFA's goal is to raise educational awareness of agriculture in our community, as well as promote student involvement and leadership in educating future generations about agriculture's importance. And we gotta say, Go Bobcats. <laughs> All right, now the Fort Sam Houston Kitson section is one of only two active duty full-time units in the U.S. United States Army. The other is located at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. The caisson at Fort Sam Houston proudly honors fallen members of the military with funeral honors at the Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. The caisson horses are named after former sergeants, sergeants major of the Army, and Medal of Honor recipients from the United States 5th Army, which is head at the historic quadrangle on Fort Sam Houston right here in San Antonio. And the Fort Sam Houston caisson is providing a mounted color guard for the Heritage Parade, and thank you all for your service. All right, riding the unique horse-drawn trolley today are 20 dignitaries and guests of the city of Live Oak, which, uh, you know, who's representing the sponsor of all the Western Heritage Parade weekend events. Boy, they have got a wagon full of other riders like uh, Live Oaks Pro Tem, Ed Simmix, pardon me if I messed up your name, and wife Peggy, and a lot of all the council folks out there as well. Uh, All right, and now... The Buggy Barn Museum has been involved with the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo's Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive for the past seven years. Yep, Buggy Barn Museum is located up in Blanco, up Highway 281 North, and in Blanco County, of course, and has more than 150 unique buggies, carriages, and wagons. The Buggy Barn is dedicated to providing a unique educational opportunity to step back in time to the late 1800s and early 1900s. And a lot of them are starring in a lot of shows, such as 1883. They even have an old West Town and movie studio. That's so cool. We have stars, movie stars <laughs> amongst our. 
And I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick little break here, but we're going to have more of the 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. And welcome back to the 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. And boy, you know when you see the Jefferson Lassos under the direction of Mrs. Mary Garcia and Assistant Director Ms. Christina Vickers. Established in 1932, the Lassos caught the eye of the nation when they were featured on the cover of Life magazine. Later, their notoriety earned them the right to perform for First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and even inspire a Hollywood movie. Now today, they can be seen across South Texas in parades, community events, and numerous fundraisers. They are fantastic. The Lassos are a service performance and spirit organization and support girls' dream of becoming a Lasso. All right. It consists of cavalry, artillery, and quartermaster elements. Yes, indeed. All those good Aggies out there. Military training at A&M included a mounted drill unit until 1943 when they disbanded its horse operations. And the cavalry tradition was revised in 1974. And the Corps uses military horses training to teach cadet self-discipline, confidence, and leadership. Today's unit consists of 89 cadets, 63 horses, and seven mules that are owned by the unit. And the 2021-22 Parsons Mounted Cavalry is led by Cadet Major Sarah Nair. The executive is Cadet Captain Preston Ward. First is led by Cadet Captain Aaron Cohane, I believe. And second balloon is led by Cadet Captain Nathan Hughes. First sergeant Captain Cullen Epright. They are absolutely Beautiful. And it's always great, too, when you see the A&M band, when they have them in the uh, Battle of Flowers parade. Yes. And, yeah. We got great university fish <laughs> up there. We and got can, a lot of Aggies. I was going to say, those A&M fans cheering. Uh, showing the ring, giving up, going whoop. <laughs> Sarah Spivey and Justin Horn right now. Oh, I yeah. Love- I can hear the cheering from here. Oh, God. And then you've got the beautiful A&M band, which is always one of the great traditions there. So many wonderful traditions. Thank you all so very much for coming down here. Of course, College Station got its name because the railroad tracks run right through there, and that was the actual name of the station. And it was, oh. they would stop and say, we're at College Station. <laughs> Easier. <laughs> that was pretty easy. <laughs> Justin Horn told me that little factoid. And the, the wagon towed by a couple of beautiful mules. Next, the Ranch Rodeo, San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Ranch Rodeo Committee proudly supports working cowboys and Western heritage with the annual Ranch Rodeo Invitational. This elite event held on the last day of the 18-day San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo features six of the best teams from ranches across Texas who have been invited to compete for money, prizes, and bragging rights. Cowboys work together in a series of fast-paced and timed events where their ranch hand skills and talents bring the crowd to their feet. And all proceeds from the Ranch Rodeo Invitational and the Collegiate Rodeo Challenge benefit the Rodeo Scholarship Fund, which also includes scholarships for the college rodeo athletes. Great seats are still available for this popular event on Wednesday, February 23rd, so get your tickets today. You know, and it is Mm -hmm. so great seeing cowboys work and ride and do those skills, which are amazing to watch. (laughs) All right, now the Alamo Management Group takes great pride in the opportunity to serve you and focus on building a lasting partnership, not just gaining a contract. And they know a strong community starts with and is further strengthened by the support of its management team. They offer many digital solutions to ensure smart and convenient service, but will never forget the value of developing personal relationships. 
Being locally owned and operated, they are always available to meet with you face-to-face and are easily accessible over the phone. They provide a direct connection to a live person who values your call and facilitates same-day solutions. Tell you what, we're going to take a little break real quickly, and then we're going to come back with more of the 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive right here in downtown San Antonio. Welcome back to the 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. And there are the Charos de Bejar. They are the competition team of Bear County. Absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Composed of 13 teams, they compete in Chariada, or the traditional ranch competition of Old Mexico, the precursor of rodeo. It's both similar, but a little different. Charos and Charos compete in the traditional treje, or cloths, of Old Mexico. Now, in in accordance with the Latin idea of sociality, they compete in teams that are usually centered around families, and it's not unusual to find a team with three or four generations of charros performing. And rodeos emphasize utility, while chariata is more concerned with style. And in team roping, in rodeo catching the steer is as quickly as possible is the purpose. In chariata, catching the steer with the most beautiful florerio, or making a flower with the rope is the purpose. And that's why the chariata is sometimes called rodeo with style. And that's why charos and charas all say viva chariada. All right, the raffle committee is, this is determined and motivated. The committee chases every dollar to raise money for the hardworking kids who put on early mornings and late evening hours to nurture and raise their incredible 4-H or FFA animal projects. Kids who make the steer, goat, lamb, pig, or poultry sale for the junior livestock auctions are direct beneficiaries of this committee's year-long efforts. Next, we have the... Texas Rough Rider Drill Team. The Day House Rough Riders are an award-winning patriotic drill team that comprises of men and women aged 13 to 65. Their team was established back in 2005 by their founding Captain Colleen Dyer and is currently under the direction of Captain Roski, Roxy Vasquez. They have mother, daughter, and father-son team members, and several of the team members have been with them for more than 10 years. They hold tryouts monthly and, you know, for male and female riders ages 14 and up. And you can follow them on Facebook at a Tejas Rodeo Rough Riders Drill Team. And they perform in more than 40 rodeos and several parades annually. All right. And we are going to right now. Of course, the rodeo it is beginning once again, coming up this Thursday, and we have got a look at what is going on. Yes, every year the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo gets bigger and better, and earlier we showed you a little bit of what to expect this year, but right now we're going to take a closer look at all the fun. It's so great to say let's rodeo San Antonio and uh, here with us today is the CEO of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Cody Davenport. It is an exciting time of year. I mean the excitement you can just feel it around here right? Oh absolutely we're so excited especially after last year I mean seeing the San Antonio wake up like it has and recognize it's rodeo season it's good to be back in force. Is there one thing that you can pick out that you're just most excited about? You know I am very excited about the fact of what we learned last year you know we talk a lot about how last year was tough but we learned so much and one of the main things we learned was that the public for so long we've been putting on our equestrian events and a lot of things that people are seeing on Yellowstone right now you know the cutting and all these you know the trend right now all these things we had it buried on one side of our grounds for so long and we learned last year you know what the Coliseum is a pretty cool place to run a rodeo inside of so we're putting dirt back inside of that this year we're bringing all of our equestrian events so the public can come down for free and get to witness all this stuff all day long they're getting up close and watch all the activities with the horses we'll have a, a discovery area there for horses well they get up close to our livestock shows will be full on our open shows will be back as well not just our youth shows but we'll be having all of our open shows okay then a lot of people are always just excited about the music and you always have just musicians from every musical genre uh what are some of the highlights well, we wanted to come back and force again and remember, hey, we're here. So we swung pretty hard on our music lineup this year, but we've got, you know, big acts like Toby Keith and Tim McGraw, um, you know, Ryan Bingham, again, reference Yellowstone, but a lot of the a lot of the Texas type music from that side and even Ludacris is coming to town. So we're trying to cover the spectrum. Okay, what's new this year? Uh, new this year, we've got Mutton Bustin'. I don't know if you remember, but right before we got shut down with uh, COVID, we mm-hmm. brought in Mutton Bustin' on the grounds where all day long we could run Mutton Bustin'. Everybody could get out there and they could do this and they could win the right to go inside of the 
AT&T Center and compete. They now have their own tent, so we start really integrating the public that's here, getting the agricultural experience, realizing they're out of stock show and rodeo, but yet maintaining that fair feel as well. So I think they'll see a lot of neat changes in our grounds this year and our layout and that whole flow. Also, we're, uh, we're doing a lot more climate control. We're taking advantage of our climate controlled facilities. I want to talk about the change in the grounds. Uh, we'll have over there what we call Expo 2. We'll have a watch party over there that is open to the public. You can go inside of there. We'll have a preliminary show, which will talk about the rodeo that's happening that night. A lot of the matchups, the livestock or rough stock that's going to be bucking out, and then who's on it, things like that. A lot of rodeo education. Then we'll run the rodeo, and then we'll close it out. But also, during the day, we'll have big screens inside of there that will show our livestock shows. And we'll even have commentary inside of there for people that are not, you know, from the background of showing or being used to uh, how that industry works. Uh, education, showing them what the judges are looking for, what these kids are doing and, and how this whole operation works. That's brand new as far as trying to educate the public on what's happening inside of our livestock. So that'll be in that climate control expo hall number two. We have uh, dancers going tonight. Again, we've moved out of our tents and a lot of things, put them into climate controlled buildings. We are a February event. So we're taking advantage of that. It can be cold. It, it can, can be, be hot. So. As we witnessed last year. Speaking of the fair feel, of course, there's the carnival. I mean, you got to have funnel cakes and everything else that goes yeah. with it. Yeah, we moved uh, the carnival. It's back up here on our northeast side. We've actually expanded it. It has a larger footprint this year. Um, we'll have some vibrant things in there, like we have its own DJ in there this year. But yeah, I mean, I grew up playing on a carnival down here, so a lot of fun. Yeah, you got to. I mean, if you, if you don't have a funnel cake when you're at the rodeo, it's just it's just not the same. So <laughs> Probably too many of them, yeah. How about, <laughs> that's true. How about promotions and specials and everything else? We've got a lot of them going this year. Again, waking up San Antonio, bringing back everybody into the rodeo this year. We've got a lot of them going on. You know, my best suggestion is go to our website because there's so many in the listing so large. Go to our website and see what all we have. What we're doing this year, we're very proud. We're bringing an event called the Noche del Vaquero. And it is a blend of the Hispanic heritage and the sport of rodeo but a historical storyline going through it. We call it a showdio. So it's going to be a show with all aspects of the history and the Hispanic culture inside of agriculture. It'll, at the end, we'll, we'll be uh, bucking out charros, but then we will end it with one of our PRCA contestants bucking out in the same manner. They'll go out there and shake hands, and we'll talk about how the sport evolved to what you're watching these, uh, you know, in this current time. So it's kind of the evolution of the sport of rodeo in this showdio format. That's called our Noche del Vicero. We also will bring in a chariata, on Sunday and an Escadamusa competition. And, okay, come down and see it. What are the dates? February 10th through the 27th. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, and of course, now you are looking at Grupo Folclorico de Bendiciones, of course, an award-winning folclorico dance group from right here in San Antonio, and they were just voted the fan favorite for 2022. And if you watch them dance, you can see why the professional dance group was discovered by performing at numerous charity events around Texas and established in 2015 by Anthony Salazar. The mission is to continue to share their talent and culture in the community. We have been honored to have them as guests on the show many, many times and boy, it's just amazing watching these folks dance. And Grupo Folclorico de Bendiciones performs a variety of traditional dances from Mexico. And you can find out where they're going to be performing next by, of course, following them on Facebook at Grupo Folclorico de Benediciones. Next, we have the Helotus Pro Rodeo Association, the 34th Annual Helotus Festival Association. PRCA Rodeo is going to take place at the Helotus Fairgrounds April 28th through the 30th. They have a full PRCA rodeo and great entertainment each night. And, hey, can't have a rodeo without a carnival midway with food vendors, lots of good beverages. <laughs> For more information, just go to cornyvalve.org. Love all those festivities and, mm -hmm. yeah, all the food that you get at rodeos. Next, Thunder Hill Drill, Drill Team. This is the Texas Thunder Drill Team out of Bulberti. Yes, this award-winning team presents the colors and performs high-speed complex drill routines to entertain at regional events, including PRCA-sponsored rodeos and county fairs, as well as convention rodeos. And they also provide color guards at private events and enjoy riding in local parades like what they're doing right now. <laughs> That is the Texas this Thunder Trail team, team out of Bull Verde. <laughs> You know, it is just so beautiful. I keep saying this over and over uh -huh. again, but seeing these 
all these folks and these gorgeous animals right down the streets here, Houston Street. All right, now the high stocking miniature horses and Shetland ponies. They are owned and trained by Robin and Jim Bailey. And just right, uh, right down the street from here, basically, in Lavernia, and these little horses, they come in all colors and are used for pleasure and horse show competitions. Many horses and Shetlands go by height requirement. A Shetland is typically 42 inches or fewer, and a mini horse is considered to be 38 inches and, and fewer. Did not know that. High stocking miniature and Shetlands provide boarding lessons for kids, too. And the trainee must learn horsemanship to compete. And during competition, they aren't allowed to touch their bodies or make them do different tricks. I didn't know there was so much yeah. to that. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. They are so incredibly cute as they go by. I can't even right now. And I, I love the little the little wagons that they're pulling too that everybody has i can just hear my little girl who's watching right now i want one mama <laughs> that's all she's going to be talking about coming up here in just a little bit all right next is the true women drill team members they are proud to honor the pioneering spirit of women who helped settle guadalupe and surrounding counties the team's name comes from the book true women written by guadalupe county's own janice woods wendell and their current members come from a wide variety of backgrounds, including business owners, healthcare professionals, administrative assistants, educators, domestic engineers, military service members, and a whole lot more folks. Uh, look at them wave into the crowd. Their common love of horses and performing, well, that keeps them focused on providing the best possible performance, entertaining the crowd, and supporting our community. And it is so wonderful to have you right here in downtown San Antonio, ladies. All right, this is the second entry for our Dennis Moore Buggy Barn. The Buggy Barn Museum has been involved with the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo's Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive for the past seven years. Located uh, just right up 281 up in Blanco, 150 unique buggies, carriages, wagons, all have been just painstakingly and lovingly restored. And most of them are actually not too much different than what they were even back in the 1800s. Yes, and the Buggy Barn is dedicated to providing a unique <laughs> educational opportunity to step back in time to the late 1800s and early 1900s. And I'll tell you what, it once again has been an absolutely fantastic 2022 Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. We want to thank you all so very much. We want to thank you all so very much for watching. And don't forget, this Thursday coming up is the Rodeo Primetime kickoff. We are going to be showing the first night of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo in its entirety. And all the events, you're not going to miss anything. No commercials, I understand, with that. Ooh, and then stop that, action and fun. A couple of horse folks there, David Sears and Ursula Perry. We have a special coming up following that, and that's from 9 to 10. And again, this is this coming Thursday, the 10th. All right. And that, of course, wraps up the parade. And we are going to send it out to Jen to see what's going on over there. Yes, thank you guys. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, we're still here at Market Square where the Bucketto Cook-Off is happening. Earlier, I showed you the eight teams that are competing, but we also have students here, some youngins that are working on some rice. We'll come over here. Hi, guys. We are live right now. Can you show me what you got so far? Yes. Tell me go. about this rice. Uh, actually, he can tell you because I did not make it. Tell me about your rice here. <laughs> uh, so our rice is just... What grain are we using? Um, so we cut up green bell peppers, onions, and cherry tomatoes. That's your, yeah. Beautiful! And that then we cool. started off by browning, uh, like almost getting into a light brown with the uh, vegetables and some olive oil uh -huh. in our pan. Beautiful. So then we added in our rice and letting that brown. And then we added seasonings, which were paprika. And if I remember correctly, it was paprika. Um, sauce tomatoes, chili powder, awesome. uh, and black pepper. So a lot that goes into this, yes, right? Are you guys excited? Too. We are, you know. <laughs> yes. I'm awesome. very nervous, but yet yeah, excited. Well, yeah, it looks fun. good and it smells amazing. So thank you guys. Good luck to you, okay? Thank you.
Thank you all so much. So there's about four different teams from the high schools and they're all doing rice and beans. I know we're walking as we're trying to show. Guys, say hi. Good luck to you all. Uh, again, there's a, this goes on till 11 o'clock tonight. So we'll show you Lee High School here. They've got some bison chili around the corner. There's menudo. Some of them are giving out samples. So definitely a lot going on. And so I think I'm going to get myself some samples. I hope you guys have had a great time watching. It's been an awesome time again, 11 o'clock tonight. So you can come out here and be sure to watch SA Live Monday through Friday, 1 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Yeah.